Welcome, everyone. Uh, for over 35 years, Jennifer has followed her passion and pursuit of personal growth that has propelled her to explore the mysteries of human potentials, to uncover hidden resources and unlock her own greater capacities. Her journey has taken her around the world, visiting sacred sites and attending workshops, studying meditation, integrative medicine, consciousness and transformation. She has learned energy healing techniques in Brazil, attended the mystery schools of Dominher in Italy, and studied at the Chopra Center University in California. Building on the firm foundation of her extensive training and knowledge, Jennifer spent a number of years studying, working, and traveling with Jean Houston starting in 2012. Mastering transformative techniques designed to enhance the physical, sensory, psychological, mythic, symbolic, and spiritual capacities within individuals. And now her passion is to share what she has learned. As a wisdom guide, one of Jennifer's greatest joys is to help others realize their inner strengths and gifts while aligning them with their own unique higher destiny. And Jennifer is one of my dear soul sisters of more than 30 years. I'm thrilled to introduce her tonight in this forum on the conversation with our beloved Bob and Noel of Co-Creators Convergence. So tonight she's going to be talking about out of your mind and into your power. So with that, I'll hand it over to you, Jennifer. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to... Let's do a couple things here. Very good. So welcome, everybody. I'm so excited, and it's nice to see some familiar faces and some new faces as well. I'm going to, um, tonight I want to start with just a little bit of a, a slides to talk about dimensions, but I want to make this a conversation and uh, talk about your experiences with dimensions as well. So I'm going to give a framework to put around the dimensions since we can talk about, like I said, dimensions of Zoom or dimensions of time, or there's so many different ways to talk about dimensions. So I wanna get a uh, framework. And then we will have a little discussion. And then I'd like to give you an experience um, using some of the techniques I've learned with Jean Houston and, and at Dom and her, and just about going into those inner realms that most Lupas probably are pretty familiar with already. But we're gonna do it collectively, which is another layer um, when we go in with that density of a group with the same intention to get some information. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm gonna see if we can share screen here. Okay. So, um, out of your mind and into your power. And I like this, um, this, these, this wording out of your mind, because that kind of um, makes us all think about how locked we are in our minds, how much we put emphasis on our mind and thinking. And into our power is, is one step beyond that. Um, but we'll come back to going out of your mind. There we go. So life is multidimensional. We've heard this many times, and many of you are probably familiar with that layers of life. Um, it's shown in many different formats. Um, we have that psych the physical layer, the psychological layer, and the spiritual layer. But we also can have the first dimension, second dimension, third dimension, all the way up to, I've heard, seven dimensions, 12 dimensions, and even further. Um, we're going to be focusing on the first five dimensions, which are the ones that are closely related to our um, individuated soul and who we are. So if you take the shape of an hourglass here, and then we look at the physical layer, that physical realm, that's the uppermost layer of who we are. That's the physical world, which is our extended body, the physical body, which is our personal body, and our energetic body, which is that life vital force or the chi or the prana. We also have below that layer, as we go a little bit deeper into who we are, we have the subtle layer made up of our mind, our intellect and our ego. In this model, the mind is like the repository of all our sensory inputs. So everything that we receive from the outside world um, through our you know, sound, smell, taste, touch. It's like hitting a um, raindrops on a wet sidewalk. Everything's received into the mind. The intellect then takes those um, different 
uh, senses that we've received and processes them. And then we have the ego, which then says, this is me and this is not me. Below that is the causal realm or the causal layer, where we have the personal soul, where your memories and your desires are. You have the collective, which is where the archetypes, the myths, the gods are all in the collective realm. And then we have the universal, which is that singular source, pure potential. So that's the model that I, I see most often when we talk about meditation or, or different um, ways of consciousness, types of consciousness. We're gonna go into that description of the dimensions. So we know, um, I'm gonna go just very loosely in this. I don't wanna to go too deep. When we talk about one dimension, we're talking about one point and there's no time, no space. It's just a single point. Your root is the chakra. And this is where we have our basic human needs in our first, uh, first level of consciousness. They also talk about um, crystals or water or things like even the human DNA. This is samples or ideas of the first dimension. When you get to two dimensions, you have two points. That's where we start with duality. The time aspect in that 2, 2D is a now and not now. It's one or the other. The chakra is sacral. When we're in the 2D, we attain that present moment awareness. So if you think about plants and um, lower animal consciousness, it's really living in the present moment only. And so you can um, excel in present moment awareness at the 2D. Then we move up to the 3D and that's the space and time. Time is actually a part of all of these different dimensions. Um, but time, space and time, that's where individual is realized as well as a diversity of life around the individual. So beginning to be aware of things around you. We also become aware in the time level of cause and effect. This is where karma comes in. And we also have the solar plexus as a chakra. Notice we're moving up our chakra system in these level of consciousness and in these dimensions. So self-awareness is accessed here and we begin to um, excel in unconditional love or try to access the unconditional love. And this is also where past, present, and future are actual separate times. And so we get this rise of the linear model. Our mind starts thinking linearly. Then we move into the interesting ones, which is what we're gonna focus on tonight, is the fourth dimension and the fifth dimension. The fourth dimension is an astral level. It's that lower thoughts. Um, if you think of dimensions also as going from a heavier frequency of vibration up into a lighter and a lighter frequency of vibration. The fourth dimension is where we have the um, heavier thoughts. So you have positive and negative. Um, it's non-local when it comes to time. So there's no time. It's the heart chakra. What I like is that when we start getting into this astral plane, this astral dimension, we have past, parallel, parallel and future Earths, worlds existing together. Past, parallel, and future Earths, all existing at the same time. This is hinting at time. When you say non-local, um, it's also out of time in the sense that we have all time accessible here. Uh, we can bridge into this astral through our dreams, our intuition, meditation. And then the first 50, 5D is the causal or the higher thought realms. This also is non-local, it's the third chakra. And this is where um, thoughts and universes and individuals all become spontaneously realized in the moment. So you have a thought and it creates right there. It's the highest level of dimensions where we still have an individual personality. We are still uh, so as we start going into six, seven, eight, we're starting to get more into closer to that source into non or uh, non dual duality. We get more into the uh, source and pure oneness. Again, this is just a um, model that I want to work from as we go into our meditations and things. Okay, I just love these 
pictures. Actually, I want to stop sharing for just a moment and get some thoughts from you all about dimensions, about what your understanding or any questions you might have so far. Because we're going to lay the two dimensions together next. So, <laughs> um, just when you say the fo the fourth dimension was a higher level than the fifth dimension, or no? When I, higher, if I said I said that wrong, thought. higher. Th the fourth level is the first when you're entering the astral realm. You have the uh, the first level you hit is that little bit denser thought. You haven't moved out of the earth realm that has oh, okay. all the negative thoughts as well as the positive thoughts. Okay. So when we do our work, um, you know, when working with me, when we do meditations in the morning, one of the things I focus on is raising our frequency before we go too much into the meta realm. And that is to get us beyond that first level of thought forms. We want to get into a little bit higher into that fifth level, a okay. fifth dimension when you get in higher. Okay. Thank you. But yes, go ahead. You're on mute. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you. Hi. Um, are you aware of Alice Bailey concepts of the seven bodies? Does it has to do with the dimensions that you are speaking about? The bodies, physical, etherical, mental, emotional, astral, buddhical, celestial, and causal? Very similar, yes. Um, okay. Actually... On one of the, I'm going to show you another slide that has puts overlays that in it. They're all, all these different traditions and wisdoms all come from the same source, you know, the same wisdom, and so they have different names. I I go from more from the um, uh, Vedantic, uh, the Vedas. My my training is, is there, and so it's it's the same idea that we have that, um, you know, the uh, the physical realm that is a physical bodies. You have the um, different layers that match the aura is going out from the body. Yeah. Anybody else? So when we're meditating and we're going into that higher space, are we stepping into that five, five D to the fifth dimensional space more? You go to four and five, but you can also, you're still, you know, when you've, um, meditated and you get into that place where you just kind of lose you're aware of everything but nothing in particular you're kind of ex totally expanded you've gone beyond 5d there okay you start getting yeah you, know, you get pretty high 5d you come back down a little bit more and you're still aware of yourself but you're aware it's like bridging you're able to pull in some of that information and some of those ideas and apply it to your physical reality your 3d reality when we start getting up into that where you just want to go and stay, you know, yeah. in the higher realms. <laughs> That's a little bit further. So okay. Jen, is that, just to clarify, I mean, I'm thinking that, that Leanne, you just said this, but is it that place where you lose the sense of your body? Like you don't have a sense of being -ness. So, I mean, I'm trying to think, how do you put it into words? Um, so you don't have a sense of your body, but you have a sense of beingness, I guess is a better way to put it. Yeah. So, so these, these dimensions aren't like a, a line where you walk over and you're in the next dimension. They, they definitely are, are a spectrum, right? They overlap. Right. And when we, and when we meditate, because we're still attached to the physical body, we're, we're doing this up, you know, we're going up and down. So we're kind of sliding through different dimensions all the time. Even when we're we awake here, we're in different dimensions. Like and in our consciousness. Stay, hmm? Okay, so we don't really stay in one. We're continually moving between the dimensions because of this? Well, to be even clearer, we are in all the dimensions all the time, but our focus or our conscious awareness is sliding between them. So we are already in all of them. And that sense of when the lighter and higher you get, the more you are not attached to your physical body. I think that was a, what you were saying before, the more mm -hmm. you are connected with everything mm -hmm. and less with one thing specific. Mm -hmm. So you think about um, universal consciousness is where you become one, right? With, with a source. Right. 
that's pretty far away for us to reach from here. Mm -hmm. But as we get closer, we start having more and more of that sense. And so when you tip over the fifth dimension, according to this uh, model that I've been sharing, when you get beyond the fifth, you're getting closer then to that source. So you're having less and less of this is me okay. and more and more of this is me. Everything is me. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No, I, I enjoy. Anybody else? And please, I'm, I'm open if somebody has some other ideas about dimensions, we can share that as well. This is a conversation. Okay. So we'll what keep... about ghosts? Where, where do you think that, what dimension are ghosts in? So ghosts, um, there's different, in the astral realm, there's different um, other entities, other, um, well, the disincarnated souls, I meant, like the what? people that has transcended. Mm -hmm. So, right. So, the, so the ghosts, there's different, in the astral plane, there's different entities you can meet. Some are the um, ghosts that have been human forms. Some are not been human forms. Some are nature elements and different. Um, they are in, you know, from my understanding, my belief structure, they are in the astral realm. Um, where they are in the astral realm depends on their conscious level as well, just as much as they no longer have form um, and, and they may not stay in that astral realm, they may move beyond. Um, but you can have somebody that's recently, whoops. I'm not sure I just lost, can you see me? Yep, you're still good. Yeah, you're, you're still fine. Good. Still good. I don't know what happened with my, I can't see you anymore. Okay. Um, oh. Go down, to your, <laughs> down into your uh, bar down below. It's your battery. There we it's go. your bat. Maybe it. your bat is low. It's a ghost. No, I got it back. So anyways, um, it, when somebody passes, if they've still got a lot of connection to the earth plane, they're going to be very dense and heavy and with their concerns or whatever. So they'll be in the lower realm where somebody that's been doing their work might be in the higher realms. And that would just be my understanding. Anybody else? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. And there we go. Oops. Excuse me for a second. <laughs> yeah, I do this all the time. You'd think I'd be much quicker. There we go. You can see that? Okay. So I was just looking, the first hourglass um, model is something I learned from Vedanta, from Deepak Chopra and, and that school of thought. And then I just put in the um, dimensions on the side there, just to get a sense. When we're going, when we're meditating and we're going on these, um, I call them the journeys that we take, the journeys in consciousness, we start by closing our eyes, getting coming into the physical body, then going deeper into the energetic body, going below the mind, the intellect, the ego, and touching into that personal soul or the collective soul. It's kind of a journey down through the hourglass. We can also say it's a journey through these dimensions. You know, we're, we're leaving the third dimension consciously, moving into the fourth and the fifth dimension. I like this hourglass model. And those of you who I've shown it to before know that when you do an hourglass, the center is really pinched, is tight. The top of the hourglass in this model, the physical world is open, going to the infinite. So we're connected to the stars and to the galaxies and infinite. And the bottom of the hourglass, the personal soul, the causal realm, goes down into the universal and is infinite. The only restriction, constriction, is in the subtle realm, where the mind, the intellect, and the ego is. There's a lot of traditions that would say, you know, you want to remove the mind, the mind and the intellect. You don't want an ego. But in this model, what we are looking at is expanding that section so that we're a clear channel of source of the universal energy and the collective energy and personal soul through our mind, our ego, which is our tool, up to the physical world and into our reality. So we're expanding that center. 
I like to look at um, one other thing when we're doing this, when we're meditating. We go into these worlds on these journeys and we're planting seeds, um, questions, intentions, ideas. We're planting them into our, into our subtle realms, into that causal realm, into this, the source. So you might have a question of who am I or what is my purpose? These are beautiful soul questions. And when you're in the meditation, we're not going in with the mind to get the answer so much as we're going in to plant the seed and then allow it to bubble up in our, into our 3D, into our awareness during the day, during, the, during our life. So it's interesting to go into those deep meditations, opening up as much as you can all your inner sensing all your imagination, all your um, inner hearing, smell, taste, touch, all that. So we receive, and uh, Gene Houston used to say, we cook on more burners. We open up to all of this information that's in there, get saturated, then we come back out into our everyday life, and then we start experiencing what we've, what we've gotten. Okay? So the fourth dimension we still have a sense of physicality, of time, and of individualized ego. It's more, we have it in the fifth dimension too, but it's really still there. Again, it's in the heavier thought form. So you're, you might be meditating um, or dreaming, and you still are in your daily life challenges and things that are going on with you. And you're still in your, your um, body, feeling your body. Again, I'm going to emphasize that we have the past, the parallel, and the future worlds. They exist here. So we imagine things, or we go beyond imagination. We go into that imaginal, where there's power, where, it's, where there's potential and, and possibility. And we go into there, and that's where we can create worlds or connect to worlds that are parallel. Jean used to have me do... Um, to go into these parallel worlds and find a world that works. That was one of the things that she used to say all the time when we'd work together is let's go into meditation and find a world that works. And what she would be doing is sending me in to my own imagination, my own depth work in her realms. And then to go beyond what I know and tap into a possibility. And so you start imagining a different me and you give it maybe some, uh, some, something that you can connect to. So maybe it's a me with the same kind of family, but it's in a futuristic world. And what would that world look like? And these are just some of the seeds that she would plant that then I would, my imagination would grab onto and then journey and go after and get more information. One of the worlds she took me into was... Um, for health, looking at my own body. I had Lyme disease and we were looking at how do we find a connect to a way to heal myself. So I went into the um, astral realm and connected with another dimension of me where she lived in a world where the body was the primary intelligence. Instead of our mind being our primary intelligence, you moved through this world where your body would sense where you were and tell you what you needed. And then the mind processed after the body. So imagine just for a moment what a place like that would be like. If you think of a baby holding their hand and looking at it and being totally enthralled with their hand and how it moves. Imagine you never lost that kind of connection with your body that you are just totally absorbed with the sensations and everything going on in your physical body. So, tapping into a world like that, you become in tuned with your, um, auto, your immune system, you become in tuned with your organs, how they, what they're operating like. And then you imagine a world where, um, where the places you live actually are around what your body would want you to live in. Imagine what that would be like. These are some of the journeys you can take in these dimensions, in these realities. And you go in kind of bending how you think, changing how you think. And so you start just pulling in information and activating yourself. Then when you come out, then you journal, you draw, you 
daydream, you, things start coming up and answering solutions for what you want. And in this case, with the Lyme disease, I was actually able to connect with that part of my body, get a sense of my immune system and heal myself of Lyme. Okay. So in this fourth dimension, we start to have this great flexibility to create these new realities. So we're accessing information and then we can start dreaming it here in this reality and focusing and bringing, creating our reality because we have something now to inspire us, something that we want to bring in. Again, I mentioned before that um, when we do our morning meditations in my group, I pay a lot of attention to raise our frequencies when we go into this fourth dimension, to, to think of gratitude, um, compassion, love, some of these qualities that naturally raise our frequency. So then we are reaching above those heavier, denser thought forms. We're going up into that higher level, getting closer to the fifth dimension. Okay, fifth dimension. Again, I said this before, the thoughts, universes, and alternate selves are instantly materialized, much more than the fourth dimension, but less than even the higher dimensions. This is also where we have individual personal timelines and reincarnation, so past, present, and future are all experienced simultaneously, and they interact with each other to further their collective and individual experiences. So many of you know that we talk about time as a territory. It's not this linear past, present, future. It's actually a place you can move around and, and move through time. Um, when you reach this fifth dimension, some of the higher fourth and the fifth dimension, you can actually start experiencing yourself in other dimensions at the same time other past lives or other lives because it's not really past. Um, you can do a lot with, with memory. If you think memory is um, part of your soul, your personal soul, your, your memories and your desires are, are held there. So that in, just in speaking that, it, it's referring to a level that is higher than this fifth dimension. The personal soul is closer to that causal realm right? It's closer to the universal and the collective. So your memories are kept there. So the memories of all of who you are, are together. All of who you are, are all the dimensions of um, you, which is all your past lives, all your future lives, all your, your present lives, are all the memories are all in one place in your soul. And your soul is, you know, the frequency of your soul is on this um, in these dimensions in many different places at once and many different times. Is that mind blowing, right? <laughs> okay. I'd like to stop sharing for a moment and open up again for questions or thoughts. I have a question. Go ahead. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. Um, hi. Hi, Bob and Noel. I haven't seen you in years. From Dalman here, Mary. Oh, yeah. Oh, hi. Hi, hi there. <laughs> I'm in the dark. Um, on the fifth dimension, can you give, conceptually, I understand, but is there an, a, an example, you know, that you could kind of describe an experience that would, we could kind of sense into a little bit more? So... For me, I think about the fifth dimension. Um, you're, you're working quite a bit lately beyond the fifth dimension. You're in that place where you're that oneness, right? You talk a lot about meditation going into that expanded feeling. Yeah. Okay. So that expansion. So be, right before you get to that level where you're still you, but you're very mm -hmm. high and expanded, that's going to be in the fifth level. Okay. Um, then when you, a little bit lower, the fourth level has more density to it. It's a little heavier, but it's still in that medita meditation level. Make so sense? It does. May I, I'll, I'll describe the situation with uh, another group and there's four of us, but three of us were in this 
met group meditation and we were interacting with each other. I mean, we were conscious too, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden we all sensed this kind of coming from the crown chakra or whatever. We felt this sense of energy source. It felt like just coming and it was the whole group. It was much more intense, much, and we each could describe our experience within it. Now we had a sense of, but, and because we believe the collective brings the whole picture together. So when you start, but was that more of that four to fifth dimension? I mean, we were just sensing into this real power energetic level. So I think it's, it's, more I think it's really good to think of um, that we, we are in a spectrum of dimensions all the time. Okay. And the more we, we work, and we evolve, the more we're able to hold more of the dimensions at once. We're able to um, be in that place of expansion while at the same time being practical and working in the 3D or we're, we're kind of bringing all the dimensions in a bridge. So when you have one of these high experiences where you are with a group, so you have a collective energy behind it, you have a density in that meta realm working in that meditation, you have the group and you're all, especially if you've been working together for a while, you've kind of created a, a deep connection. You can still, you can maintain your individuated self awareness and the collective awareness and then something even higher, the source awareness. And so it's kind of a spectrum between all of those. The saying one, two, three, four, five dimensions up to 12 dimensions right now is just to give us a model of what we're trying to do here which is very simply is um, going to that place out of the mind. So we're going beneath the mind into that place where we have infinite potential, infinite possibilities, infinite source. And then I said, I'd come back to the title being out of your mind. It's actually, we want to bring it back into the mind and be practical with it. And what are we, who are we in this world? What are we, why are we incarnate or focused consciously here now? Okay, so, so it's that the more we can hold that spectrum, the more we can expand that and, and hold more, the more we are going to bring in our true nature, our true essence, our true dreams and desires into this reality, the more powerful we are. Right. Did that answer you at all? That did, yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Bob. Noel, Bob. Hi. Hi. Uh, I want to, um, would you please talk some more about timelines? Just that conversation uh, about the fifth dimension, about us individually, maybe I'm not sure of the words you said, jumping through timelines or being on timelines at the same time, uh, whatever. And um, a good third of us that are here this evening have been blessed to visit Dominer at least once and understand to different levels their beliefs about different time collective timelines so clumsy way of asking the question but would you talk more about how timelines and being on timelines relate for the individual but also how timelines might relate to the collective So are we talking about the timelines in Dominher with their creating the, their tree, their new timeline? Is that the direction you're going? Because Yeah, it could be an example. I mean, there may be others that have other beliefs about collective, you know, civilization's collective timeline being some that there being parallel timelines or or potential of different timelines and that sort of thing. So just any so thought you might have about it. So I, I'm fascinated with the, not as the timelines, more, more as the territory of time. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the time laid out as, as, a, as a map, mm -hmm. and you can actually move anywhere you want on that map. Mm -hmm. and they, so when, for example, when um, Dom and her in their mystery schools talks about past life, they really aren't talking about past lives. They're talking about different lives that are actually influencing you in your current life, but they are in that same time territory yeah. in that. Um, 
they are they are working on a timeline and that gets into spiritual physics it's a long talk about how they do their time and create a density by reinforcing a certain timeline so that it becomes the major trunk of the tree the major time that they're they're um so to back up dom and her has um has the vision that there was a future that didn't last more than 600 years from now, less than 600 years from now, the world is over. And so they had these, and these avatars come back and they are creating a new timeline and trying to make it denser by um, causing certain things to happen in this time to kind of adjust our timeline. I don't know much about that work other than um, it's a little bit different than the way I think of time. So. Thank you. Yeah. Interesting, because it just seems like, yeah, we silly humans would think of things and are taught to think of things linear, in a linear fashion. So even the term timeline is right. line. Oh, maybe there's a parallel. It be time thing. circle. Maybe there's a parallel <laughs> line over there or one over there or one we just jump back and forth with Michael J. Fox, you know, from one place to the other. But um, the idea of territory and different spots. And when, you, and when you think, I mean, we still try to put it down into a model that we can understand with our mind. But when you layer a time territory, and then you think of time dimension. So if I'm going f into the future, which timeline am I, which future am I jumping into? Right. But also knowing whatever I envision, I can start making real. And so that's the one I can anchor in and go to kind of interesting too you know and the same thing with with past i can i can go into a past and make it very real in my present mm -hmm. yes olivia um i'm fascinated by what you were saying about the fifth dimension and i'm i'm always sort of balancing uh, the cherokee to slaggy beauty way teachings that um mm -hmm are so congruent with them and her in, in some way, and also um, Deepak. And mm -hmm. I love to sort of see commonalities while also being respectful of each differences, hopefully. And one of the things that we're taught by the Cherokee is how we are the dreamers and we are the ones who are dreaming the dream. So particularly when we come to our throat chakra, this is the, the, the place of manifestation and where we dream the world of beauty that we want to bring into the world. So I'm really excited to learn more about this fifth dimension because it seems like um, there may be some connection that I'm wondering about in, with the throat chakra. I don't know if I'm mixing no, things. Isn't it beautiful how I, how it all does interweave all these wisdoms and that's i think part of the times we're in right now the um wisdoms were spread out across the globe with many different peoples with the cherokee with the vedanta with the all these different this um cultures and it was hidden it was kept as their wisdoms and now all this information is coming out and weaving together and creating a fuller um tapestry of understanding we we, we understand now yeah. how they tie together. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Jennifer? Yeah, I just think, Jennifer, of how you and I've had conversations, if, if there's like, um, if, you know, I'm in a dilemma, that I can actually go to that version of myself in another dimension that, that kind of has the wisdom or the talent or the qualities that I need in this dimension right like yeah. that that's a lot to get your head around but so i love those kind of conversations that we've had in the past to think that that there's this version of jennifer right there's all these versions of jennifer that that have all these talents qualities experiences not just the one right now where jennifer's sitting on zoom mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing if you think of all the things that you are interested in all the things you have a slight interest or an aptitude for, but maybe you didn't get to really explore it in this life, in this dimension of you. There's another dimension of you that went fully into whatever it is you want to do. So 
you can connect with that part of you and then open it up inside your life here and use it. For me, another example was um, I was very into quantum. I love quantum mechanics, quantum science. And then um, my brother had a, a major illness, a cancer. And I, came, I worked with this part of me that was into um, quantum healing, quantum surgery, was actually a, a doctor in a world where they did quantum surgery. And it's connecting a, an optimal body to a ill body, the energy of the two and putting the two together like an organ of a kidney or whatever. And to play with that possibility and make it a, a reality. And, and when you get to a point that you can believe at a cellular level, just really believe something, you can make it real. And that takes, remember I said about um, going into these, these realm and just saturating yourself with the imagination and understanding. And you keep going back into this possibility and potential till eventually you're coming out fully activated and believing what you've been going into. When you, the more you believe something and not convincing yourself with your head that you believe it, but believing it viscerally, the more it becomes your reality instantly. Anything else? I would like to share a meditation at the end of this, if you guys want to. Huh? Okay. And I have one, I have a comment. Sure. Um, what, what I find really interesting about what you're saying, and maybe you can expand on this just a little bit more, or maybe it's just a kind of a, a beginning place for a conversation. But this idea of as we get more comfortable going into these dimensional realities or these, these other places. And as we get more at ease in them, if you will, and, and can, as you're talking about, are expanding ourselves into not just this reality, if you will, but that we, we go into those, those other dimensional realities and perhaps are pulling that information into this reality so that we're creating a more integrated self so that those dimensional parts of ourselves can be more at one with who we are meant to be, if you will. Um, I don't know if I'm explaining this or saying it, but it's, it's this other idea that the more you're connecting with and believing at that cellular level that we optimize or that we are connecting with that other dimensional, those other dimensional possibilities. You bring up something important too. And thank you, Linda, too, because there's, when we're dealing, working with these other dimensions of ourself, it's not just a going in and taking something for ourselves for this dimension. It is an integration in all the dimensions. So we have something to share back with that other part of ourself because we've um, mastered something here or we're, we're proficient in one part of who we are here. So when we go into these dimensional realms, we have a conversation. It's a back and forth. It's, this is who I am and what I've described, you know, learned in my life. Now you tell me what's in your life. And just by, again, it's important to know we go into these realms not to take all the information in our head so we can sit there and say exactly what happened. We go in just to experience it with all of who we are in that meditation, opening up all our senses to take in what is being activated. So we have a conversation and no matter what level we're understanding the conversation or how much we visualize or hear or smell, or, it doesn't matter we are opening to be activated. Then when we come out, our system, um, whether we are clairsentient, clair audio, you know, whether we hear, see, taste, touch, smell, whatever is our primary senses, we will start experiencing in our 3D realm, synchronicities, understandings coming through. If you're an artist, you might start drawing and see something in your art, or you might write something. Um, so it's about going in with those seeds of intention, getting as much energy 
which energy and information comes in together into you, then when you come out, unfolding it, opening it up, understanding it, and paying attention. Yes, so the, the other thing that you were bringing up that just reminded me, you were talking about the past, the past, the past lives that, that happened in Dam and Her that are really not past, but when we experience those lives or get more knowledge about those lives and bring them more into a conscious awareness, the more that they can influence or impact or us become aware of those aspects of those past lives that we can utilize now. And one of the things that I've been finding that's really interesting is that the more that I am aware of the those qualities that that other self or those past lives have, the more I'm bringing it into this life, if that makes any sense. You have, um, when you do these courses, these mystery school courses, the past life, it's like you've set an appointment. There's some reason why you're connecting with that particular past life at that time, because there's something that you need to become aware of in this life. There's something that you need to open up now that will help you in what you're dealing with now. And the same you can think with that other life that is meeting you, that there's something from you they need. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. 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 Anybody else? We have about eight minutes left. Are we going to, is there somebody right after me? Uh, no, I don't think there's really any limit unless Christopher says so. Or there's nothing scheduled that I know of. No, or Dana, or Dana. Okay, nothing. Okay. Yeah, go. Okay. I don't believe, right? Uh, Humana or yeah, Christopher said no, and uh, I don't know. Is that Zemea? Humana. Oh, no worries. No, no worries. worries. If we do a meditation, I don't want to have you guys have to jump out or fall off. <laughs> <laughs> We're good to go. Okay. Olivia, did you had your hand up. Are you okay? Okay. Okay. So we are going to go. Um, one more thing before we start our meditation. I use um, a technique most of you are aware of. It's called IntelliKey, and it's a process that I learned from Jean. Um, the IntelliKey is a way to uh, connect with your higher self, with that part of you that holds all the dimensions of who you are. Um, it's a very simple process. The, actually, I'm going to share screen again. Oh, I, I, I was going to share that slide. I'll have to give that to, if anybody wants this, you can email me and I will send you a copy of these slides. Um, so this is how we spell IntelliKey, E-N-T-E-L-E-C-H-Y. People always ask me when I say that. Um, so we're going to go into the meditation. I'm gonna just very quickly introduce you to your IntelliKey. And then you're gonna go into a little bit of a, a vision journey of yourself. It won't be very long, very simple. Um, so. They said, Amazon said they couldn't deliver. I'm yeah, sorry. I mean, sorry. That's okay. I'll mute. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Intellect can deliver. <laughs> yeah, Intellect can deliver. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to get back to my screen so I can give you guys the music. There we go. Stop the share. Okay. So Dana says, I have a friend who talks about IntelliKey constantly. It's her favorite concept. <laughs> oh, nice, Dana. Somebody knows uh, yeah. Jean. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Out. Okay. You might know her, it, Oriana. She talks about the IntelliKey of evolution. You know, Mariana? So, so the word IntelliKey, for those of you that don't know, it was used by Aristotle, and it means um, the IntelliKey of an acorn is an oak tree. 
So in other words, fully encoded in the acorn is its fully realized self, it's the full tree. So we say it's the entelechy of a baby to be an adult, and it's the entelechy of you to be fully realized. Okay, so I'm gonna put the music on. Can you hear this? Yes? No. No, okay. Barely. I need to figure out how to do share music only. Well. Mm. I'll do it that way. Now can you hear it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Very good. So so I like ritual because ritual helps bring our focus in, our consciousness in. So if you don't have a candle, you can imagine looking at this candle on the screen here. So with your eyes open, let's look upon the flame of your candle or imagine a flame. Remembering when we light the fire, it is the same fire lit around the world and throughout time. This flame that connects you through time and space to all the mysteries, the mysteries of the past, the mysteries of the present, and the mysteries of the future. As we greet the elemental fire, we recognize its masculine energy the hot fire of the sun. We recognize the feminine energy, the cool fire of the moon. This fire, the flame dancing on our candle, is the witness of our gathering and the mirror of a divine spark within, our internal flame. We work in the light of this flame as the eternal flame supporting us in our collective becoming and illumination. So now let's close our eyes and begin to make yourself very comfortable, relaxing just as fully as you can. And for a little while now, with your eyes closed, let's bring the awareness to the breath as we breathe in and out. In and out. Noticing the air as it passes your nose. And the slightly warmer air as you breathe out. And now let's deepen those breaths into those long, slow belly breaths in through the nose Hold, out through the mouth, hold, and continue. As you breathe in, imagine breathing in a sky blue color a sky blue energy. As you breathe out, breathe out tension and stress as if it's the color gray. Each breath in, a gentle wave of this energy, this sky blue energy. Filling your body with the fuel for our journey. Each breath out, going a little deeper a little more into the peace, the quiet, the stillness. Continuing the deep breathing. And like 
like you to imagine now that you're following this breath, this rhythm, breathing in and out. And following this breath into our circle. Imagining now that there's someone on your right and someone on your left and all the people around the circle, all of those that have joined us today, some of the faces are new and some you know, all breathing that same breath. Imagine looking around the circle now and greeting each person. How grateful you are to be in this circle. How wonderful it is to be here with each person. Still deep breathing that sky blue energy and it's swirling around you now. invite you to bring your awareness to your heart center and consider all that you are grateful for in this moment. All those things, those people, those places that bring you joy. as you feel yourself expanding with this joy and gratitude, that blue energy swirling around inside of you and overflowing all around you now. And I invite you to reach your hands out to either side and hold hands around the circle. As vividly as you can, imagining holding the hand to the right and the hand to the left and all the way around the circle. And as you breathe in, breathe in the energy on the right hand, coming in that sky blue energy, flowing through your heart, full of gratitude and love and joy, flowing out the left hand and around the circle now. moving that energy with your breath and your awareness around the circle. You may begin to notice a little warmth, a little tingling in your hands, in the palms of your hands. Continue moving that energy around the circle. Breathing in from the right, flowing through your heart, out the left, and around the circle. Very nice. Becoming aware of that sky blue energy swirling around the circle now, overflowing into the center and spiraling upward. Feeling that gratitude and love and joy expanding in the circle, creating a sacred space. can release hands and watch that energy creating a bubble now being aware that is around us in this circle 
And it's time now to bring in that dear friend, that IntelliKey, your own higher guidance. Deepening the connection with your own higher guidance. You can imagine the IntelliKey as yourself, as if you've had a thousand years to develop and do all of your human homework. So I'm going to ask you now to place your hands on your lap with your palms face up and breathe into those hands. And I want you to imagine, and for the next few minutes accept that it is true, that standing opposite you is your own high self, your IntelliKey, your higher purpose. IntelliKey is the part of you that gives you the deepest purpose and reason for being. And imagine now and accept that it is true that IntelliKey is placing his or her hands over yours and breathe into that place. You might imagine feeling some tingling a little electricity, a subtle touch, whatever it is. Begin to gain a sense of the presence of IntelliKey, who is a looking, who's looking on you so much love, so much awe and wonder. You may even begin to feel yourself becoming warm from the love that emanates from this being, this presence. Now imagine now that you can look up into the eyes of your own IntelliKey and see there the mirror of your own soul. IntelliKey holds all of the dimensions of your soul, all of who you are. As you continue to gaze at your IntelliKey, I invite you to bring to mind those beautiful soul questions to have a conversation now with your IntelliKey. The first question, who am I? Who am I? What do I want? What do I really, really want? Third question, what is my purpose? How do I serve?
Now connecting once again with that heart center. Noticing inside that sense, that yearning, that quickening. Something that is drawing you forward in your life path. Something trying to become, to unfold. And I invite you now to talk to your IntelliKey for a moment, to have a conversation. And consider, what is my dream for this world? What is it that is a world that works for me and for all those I love and around me? And just explore with your IntelliKey any way you wish. I'll watch the time. I invite you to place your hands out in front of you, still aware of that quickening feeling inside of you. As IntelliKey places into your hands a gift, a symbol, an object, something that is coded with your future, with your dream. Take just a moment now to observe, opening your sense of sight, of vision, imagining what this object is from all different sides, colors, shapes, whatever impressions. listening for a moment to your object. Is there any sound? Or is there silence? Touching the object. Noticing, is it hot or cold, smooth or rough, heavy or light? And as you consider your object, your symbol, Imagine a smell. Is there any scent? Or any taste, any flavor? Very nice. 
Now taking this object into your energy field, knowing that it is with you. It's time now to turn and follow your IntelliKey, moving back with the breath. Following the IntelliKey back into this space and time and following your breath now. Breathing in deeply and releasing. And connecting now with your toes and your fingers. And stretching just a little. Coming back to this moment and in your own time slowly opening your eyes. Welcome back. Thank you, Jennifer. That was wonderful. This Thank is Patty. You. You're so welcome, Patty. Yeah. I encourage you all to journal Thank you. your object. That was wonderful. Thank you. Um, I do have one more thing. Uh, tomorrow morning, as every morning from 7.30 or 10.30, we have a morning meditation. So if you enjoy this collective work and these, entering this field together, please join us. Um, I'll just throw that up on the screen here. And there's our Eastern. Eastern Seven. time, thank you, yes. <laughs> there we go. And can you also, oh, there we go. We've got your email as well for people that want to see your website and reach out to you. Yeah. We are starting a new series called Adventures in Consciousness, which will start in October which are gonna go through the different layers, dimensions of ourself. It will take about a year's worth of journeys, but we're gonna go through and, and collect information that's and access things that are in each level of who we are and then play with time, play with dimensions, lots of fun stuff. It starts in October. Jennifer, and, hmm? Thank you so much. This has been so dense with information and I, I feel like my mind is blown, like it, it's going to need to assimilate all this information. <laughs> Come over for a coffee run. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, everyone. We did want to say Olivia is next week. Um, yes. I apologize if I went so far over. I hope everybody's okay. Okay. I think everybody loved it, but Olivia, could you tell us a little bit about what you'll be speaking to next week? Yes, um, I'm happy to do that. Um, I'm going to be inviting people into, um, it's called Synchronicity Rocks, and I would love us to have a conversation about how synchronicity has worked in our lives. And also I'll be sharing um, some experientials about how we can shape our reality um, by working with our energetic presence and um, have more choice in the way that we perceive our reality uh, based on Aikido and mindfulness, um, leadership embodiment of Wendy Palmer. And uh, Noelle and Bob, I will send it to you tomorrow. Um, my um, description and my bio and everything. I apologize because I had to put out a few fires tonight with some other movies, um, but everything is okay. Awesome. I, I look forward to seeing you next week. And Jennifer, this was wonderful. Thank you, Olivia. Thank always, you. always. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone can unmute if they want to. And thank you. Yes. Yeah. It was wonderful. Thank you. Hey, hey Carol. I didn't see you were here. Hi, thank Carol. Hi. 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 Okay. I'm so hey, glad Jennifer. you made it. I'm sorry I didn't get my.
get your email till tonight. <laughs> hey, Nishay, nice to see your face. I know we were introduced by Bob and Noel. Oh, no. <laughs> Stay light. It's not 4.20 in the morning. <laughs> I remember Right? For anyone that's uh, not been a part of the Co Creators Convergence community, we welcome you all. Uh, very active Facebook page. You can find us there Facebook.com slash What's it called? C Groups slash Groups. love CCC love it's in, the, in the chat there. And uh, we have a Facebook, uh, we have a website, and uh, this recording will be on the website as well as oh, great. Which I have neglected to get up recently, but uh, we'll be done tomorrow. So cool. welcome there. There's six six years worth of archives there. And is Leanne's recording also there from last week? I it's was not yet, but it will be tomorrow. Will Dina's be on there also? Because I missed that one. Dina's already on Dina's there. Already on. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Can I just say that um, Karen Heffernan, uh, she had to get off the call. She had, uh, but she's probably going to be the one that's going to be the point person for CCC in uh, working with uh, the conversation. And hopefully we get this thing worked out where we can Facebook live or we might to go, to go to our old uh, site because I really think it's important for us to be able to share uh, this. But uh, one thing that you can do that will really help all of the people who are giving their time to present is to come back and bring back and it's such <laughs> rich, you know, experiences here. And uh, we, we can't be selfish and just hoard it to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Same time next week. Thank you, Leanne, for hosting. So you. You're beginning there. Mm -hmm. You're awesome. Thank you, Jen. As always, we'll see you for the. We do usually do the 7:30 a.m. Uh, meditation. And we'll see you there. March, April, May, June, July, August. We're going on seven months now. Yeah. Every wow. morning yeah. for seven yeah. months. Wow. That's good. Guys, just get better and better. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. So, well, thank Beautiful. you everyone for coming. And uh, Olivia, looking forward to next week. Thank you. And thank you, Noel and Bob, for putting this all together and being consistent and persistent about making it happen and be. I'm bragging about seven months. How many, how many years have you guys been doing it, huh? Yes, yeah, seven years, right? <laughs>